For this video, the mission will be to find out the answers to the question, how to gain confidence on the dance floor. How do you go from going to doing the steps you learn in the class to actually improvising and creating your own steps? This time we're going to Italy, to Kizomba Life Weekend. So let's go. Can you just stay through the night? Mm. Turn down the bed That's where we're going. the blinds Before you turn around Can you just stay through the night? Let me breathe you in Till gravity bends Don't cut off my air supply Make this our kingdom arrive it's actually hotter than I thought it's a nice weather here my plan is to give you 10 good tips about confident leading and confident dancing with a partner what is the 20% of kizomba that you need to learn to get 80% of results kizomba is a walking dance so you need to learn how to walk correctly then there is a frame right you need to learn how to lead when the following and leading becomes effortless, you can start experimenting. I mean, you mess up and then you can improvise and get out of the situation, so you turn the defect to effect. And I'm really curious to ask the same question to teachers and see what they say. Today we are going to Polonica. It's actually three, four hour drive away. Damn, you're a nightmare. Shut up and stay here. Stop trying to take your aim. I guess I need to get used to palm trees again. But we keep making love that drives us insane. And we arrived at the place. Okay. Perfect, perfect. We're starting today with Jose. Jose and Lafre. It's not Sunday yet. Somehow I didn't expect this place to be that beautiful. Yeah, that's crazy sun, that's why I can't normally look at the camera. The first half of Saturday's workshops are over. And now I'm just going to the sea, which is kilometer away from the actual venue. But let's get back to the topic. I know that being a confident dancer and good leader or follower are two different things. But I'm gonna try to blend them together. I'm gonna give a little backstory. At first, I learned Urban Kiss. I thought if I have cool moves, then I'm gonna be a good dancer. It worked, kinda. Nowadays, I'm doing less and less tricks not because I don't like tricks, it's just that there is little music that supports tricks. Tricks are usually good when there is big changing in the music or the, the music is crazy, crazy active. Billy from Kizomba Harmony made a great point. He said that if you take Kizomba away from Urban Kiz, basically there is nothing left. Kizomba is all that holds Urban Kiz together. And this is the reason why the point number one is to master the basics. I'm gonna be talking with uh, Rico. He's an excellent Kizomba teacher. The goal is to find 20% of the moves that you use 80% of the time. After thinking about this question myself, I thought Kizomba is a walking dance, right? So you need to learn how to transfer the weight, how to step. When we talk about the basic weight transfer in Kizomba are very very important. You are not dancing up here, you're dancing grounded. So your movement you have to be according to the your bending knees, soft bending knees, and then you place 
your weight one after another. Walking, very important. Not up and down, not sideways. If we are dancing and trying to have uh, uh, the synchronization in terms of movement, so action reaction, if my action is this, how is going to be the reaction of my partner? In the natural walk, I'm walking, I'm placing my weight step after step. In a dancing, if I have somebody in front of me, so if my action started from here, look my body where it is. The posture of his own body has to be from the chest connection. Therefore, when I give the intention, my partner will react and then we move accordingly with the actual reaction. From so if you are guessing, you are guessing you are moving, uh, waiting for something to, to happen, but on a feeling, you feel, you react. My action is your reaction. How do you practice? Basically, the music. Listen to the music. Because the music is what dictates what we have to do most of the time. Sometimes we follow the music structure, sometimes we follow the melody, and sometimes we follow uh, some instrument. My understanding is I'm moving, I'm finding the, the feeling of the music. It can be the voice of the singer. Yeah. And I'm moving accordingly and practicing my step through that feeling. And then the walking should be all the way, so I don't do the jump, I don't do nothing different than just the weight transfer back and forward. If we press a step, so we're gonna have this. If I keep it lower in terms of my, my bending knee, yeah. my dance will be there. I'm doing the shuffle turn, I'm not doing the... So you keep constantly, keep constantly bend, yeah? Bend to create strong weight in, in the place. Okay. Therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm moving. You see the footwork, but my body still at the same level. But I'm doing the footwork. Yeah. I'm doing the, the basic side to side. I'm not doing it on this level, which is like if you are claiming something, you are moving. But I'm doing it in place using en the energy from the ground and then just move my body naturally without taking it to one side or using the top in the movement. But I'm taking it here and then learn how to keep the bending knee to get the grounded and then the fluidity in terms of your movement. How do you practice it? Do you practice in the mirror? Yes, you look at the mirror, play the music, Look yourself because from the mirror you can see your mistakes. You can see, okay, I, I think my shoulder is a little bit down, so let me just correct it. But, uh, I think my head is a little bit like that because we have people having the, the head connection while they are dancing. Yeah. So therefore you correct yourself even by looking you, uh, to the mirror and then you practice with the music. And the other issue with knowing just urban kiss is that the good kind of urban kiss you can dance only with just few people. In urban kiss you need to be very sharp. It's actually quite hard to dance urban kiss. But Kizomba's foundation you can uh, adjust to different ladies. For example, if, if a lady is beginner, I'm not gonna do urban kiss steps. I may be able to do them, she may be able to do them, but it's not gonna look and feel good. And that's the main issue.
they don't want to spend more time in the beginners of foundation because they are looking for something else before they know how to walk that is a very big uh, uh, mistake because in the foundation you have a variation like wow this can work this way and then I can do it the other way around as well but because they don't stay there for longer or enough time this is what we see when we do any intermediate class there is a people that are not ready to be there but they are enthusiastic to, to be there because there is a new thing they will learn but those new things they are not using it because they are not ready for that basically are not strong enough to do it to do it without thinking or the, without going back to the video say okay you did this let me try because it's not it's not in his body we always said the dance is all about the muscle memory because as long you repeat the, the thing as long your body will react and then you will be natural as walking without even thinking stay a little bit more in the foundation and then do it over and over because that will make you even better hello beautiful people right here rico suave i would like to invite you to my festival in sardinia calidity in june from 7 to 11 2018 we are there waiting for you with the big team paparazzi james sean and for you to record this video <laughs> we are waiting for you there too one two three five six The first half of workshops are done. Now a little break. And we go on. We go on. That's what happens behind the walls. Point number two is about good leading. If you know how, let's say, this thing, this thing stabilizes the phone to get the smooth pictures, right? If I would give them to you right now, you wouldn't know how to use it, but until you play around with it a bit, you understand how this button works, you can connect it with your phone, then it starts making sense and you can get the most out of this. The same is with leading. If you know the basics of the good leading, then you can understand what you need to look for or what to adjust when something doesn't work out. I try to simplify, so I'm going to be talking about three key things you need to know about leading. In my opinion, the first thing is that you need to understand the weight transfers. Understand if the lady is she's just stepping without weight or she transferred the weight. And you should know which leg is where, right? And you can feel it with the knees. I don't know, you just feel it. Talk with the lady, okay, she says there now there is no weight, now the weight is transferred, eventually you're gonna feel it. Thing number two is the leading itself. The best exercise that I'm still doing, when something doesn't work out, I just need to either be stronger or clearer with this arm. It's a good practice to just try leading with right arm without using this at all. And the number three is chest, and chest just supports the leading. After a Latin connection, Ricardo said the shushes always should be looking at each other. It's kind of like if I'm talking to you, I'm going to be looking at you, not looking there. You move there, I move there. So with the chest, it supports the leading. So these three things, understanding weight transfers, leading with the right arm, leading with the chest. I think if you know these three things, you're going to be a pretty good leader. We need to prepare and drink some wine. Oh, and there's a couple. Skill number three is learn how to improvise freestyle to get out from different situations at first when i saw the top artists doing their demos i thought oh my god how did i get it it's so perfect it feels like it's choreographed over time when i was looking at their videos i noticed that there are mistakes it's just that artists are really good at getting out from those situations even if you mess up you just keep going and most people never notice that something even went wrong. How can you learn how to improvise? The more moves you learn, 
the more options you have. The other thing what I do, I go with her because sometimes when I lead, she needs stronger lead. So instead of forcing my way into the move, I just go with her and she never notices that something went wrong. But then I try the move again and the next time I'm leading a little stronger or giving a clearer signal, right? Other thing is just keep moving. Albert suggested one thing is if you forget the move, just repeat the same two or three steps back and forth until you remember. And even now, just, just in the workshop, Ricardo in the Samba class, he put really fast music. My mind didn't work as fast to remember the move. So what I did, I just repeated the same move three more times and then I finished it when I understood, oh yeah, this is what I need to do. So these are just good tips to get out of situation and smile always helps. You mess up, you just smile, laugh and keep going. in the middle of the last workshop but I'm gonna be talking about point number four practice I know I mentioned that in the previous video there are several steps the first part is that you just experiment and do whatever feels right it starts with the feel first the only way you can find out what feels good and looks good is if you film yourself and then analyze the video be very objective even show it to somebody else and ask their opinion the step number three would be going to the social, film yourself there. I had a big resistance myself to do it because everyone sees that I'm filming. But when I started doing it, actually nobody really cares. Usually the things that scare us when we do it, they are not as scary really. You can ask someone to film you. I feel the most natural when uh, there is no one specially looking and filming. It's a good exercise, but at first, for me, I would just put, a, put the camera on the table or somewhere I use a simple tripod. Just film yourself. And now the point number five. Again, I talked about this, but I'm gonna repeat. Know the music. If you don't know the music, do you feel confident? Not really. Imagine when your favorite song plays. How confident do you feel? The more music you know, the more confident you're gonna get. The step number two is, instead of going deeply into music structure, how songs are created, know that music is created in eight counts. What I was doing, whenever I was going somewhere, I was just counting from one to eight. Then you start feeling the changes because every second eight or every fourth eight, every eight eight, something changes. And the more you do it, the more subconscious it becomes. Eventually you train your body and your mind in a way that you have never heard that song before, but you just feel that there is gonna be a change or big accent happening. That's the end of the festival. Everybody's leaving. I've trained in one hour. It was a good festival. Tired. Hi guys. I'm Francesca and this is Jose. We are the organizer of Kizomba Life Weekend without voice. In, in Kula Kichi Vole Male. <laughs> It's been a few days after the festival. The lessons from Rico were really good. I'm practicing myself how to dance clean. He mentioned how important it is to stay at the same level, give as little misinformation to the lady as possible. You need to be in perfect control of all your body. After you've done that, then you can add some style to it. 
and the moves that we are using all the time are the walking, saidas and the virgula. So it makes sense to master those basics and that's what I'm working on uh, myself right now. I really like what Rico said about the music, listening to the music, trying to embody the music. I'm now listening myself to different kind of music and try to understand the feel and embody that feel. I must apologize, I really wanted to interview Jojo and Mikaela as well, but they were leaving on Sunday. But still I can share one story. There was a big party happening and I felt quite down. So I asked Jojo, how does he get over the bad dances? He said to me that he never has bad dances. As long as he's dancing, he's enjoying it. He always takes 100% responsibility of everything that happens. He doesn't take a role of the victim like I often do. I'm saying the music is bad or there are no good dancers to dance with. Only makes you feel bad. If I know I can lead everything and if I don't succeed then I just need to become better at it then everything is a challenge. With this mindset, I went on to the party and I had a great dancing. This is a constant challenge, but I would love to talk about this more on the next video, about the dark side of social dancing, about things that many people experience but no one really talks about. I know this was a long video. I'm curious, was it good or bad? Or was it absolutely boring? Your feedback is the only way I can improve. But if you like the video, please subscribe and like the video because your support means a lot. There was this thing that people kept saying in Italian and it's actually here. It's written on our bracelet. In culo a chi ci vuole male. The polite version would mean that we don't care about the naysayers, the haters. And that's it folks. Can you just stay through the night? Mm. Turn down the bed and the blinds before you turn around.